and Rescue, Chapter 18, Part 1, Return of the Rain Ben felt relieved at first. Dr. Wu would have fairy dust, and she'd be able to take them back to the known world. But when he saw the look on her face, he wanted to run in the opposite direction. The doctor's long black hair swayed as she marched toward them. Her white lab coat was unbuttoned, billowing behind her like a sail. She stopped a few feet from them, set the black bag on the ground, then folded her arms and glared at her apprentices. What is the meaning of this? Uh-oh, Meadowmouth said. He stepped behind Ben as if trying to hide. Stories began to pop into Ben's brain, stories that might keep Pearl and him from getting into trouble. But in this occasion, when a life was at stake, the truth seemed the best. The goat lady called us to the tenth floor, he began to explain, and even though we knew we were breaking a rule, we... Dr. Wu held up a hand to silence him. Her index finger was missing. Ben had assumed that she'd lost it dealing with some sort of dangerous creature. The scars that ran across her cheek and down her neck were other indications that her job came with great risks. Firstly, she's not a goat lady. She is a sat- satirist, and her name is Violet. Sorry, Ben said. Violet the satirist told us to. Dr. Wu held her hand up again. Secondly, you have broken more rules, rules in a single day than any other apprentices I have ever employed. She pointed at Meadowmouth. And you should know better. Metalmouth's ears collapsed. Then he hid his head behind a wing. Do you have any idea how dangerous it is to travel through the portal without proper training? Do you know how terrible it feels to get portal travel sickness? Or to fall out of the portal between dimensions? What would I have told your parents? Pearl took a cautious step forward. Dr. Wu, we only came here because no one else could. You were busy, and Mr. Tabby was busy. And Violet said the rain dragon was dying. We couldn't let her die. That's right, Ben said. Though he hadn't wanted to take this trip in the first place, now that he'd seen the rain dragon's injuries, he was glad Pearl had talked him into coming. She needed our help. She still needs our help. Someone hurt her, Pearl said, on purpose. Meadowmouth lowered his wing. A hunter. Dr. Wu sighed. Tell me everything that has happened. Ben explained how they'd found the metal trap and freed the paw. Pearl explained how they'd climbed up and poured Wu's wound glue into the hole. She stopped bleeding, but she doesn't seem better, Pearl said. She's barely breathing. Dr. Wu removed a small device from her lab coat pocket. It was another creature calculator, identical to the one Mr. Tabby carried. She punched a few buttons and read the screen. You did an excellent job with the wound glue. The rain dragon's physical health status has returned to normal. Then why isn't she moving, Pearl asked. I don't know for certain, but I have a theory. You see, Chinese horned dragons are very gentle creatures that live in harmony with the universe. The rain dragon is the most gentle of all. She does not eat flesh. She eats clouds. She does not make war. She brings rain that keeps the valley lush. She does not argue, insult, blame, envy, or lie. Does she still treasure? Meadowmouth asked. No, Dr. Wu said. She does not steal. But if her health has returned to normal, why isn't she making rain? Ben asked. Dr. Wu put the calculator away. Rain dragons are very proud of their horns. They are among the most beautiful in the imaginary world. She feels the loss of her horn very deeply. Won't it grow back? Ben asked. Antlers grow back, Dr. Wu explained, but alas, horns do not. It occurred to Ben that the rain dragon's horn was one of the many things that had been taken during the last couple of days. His grandfather's toaster had been stolen, but it was easy to buy a new one. Same for new forks, garbage cans, and mailboxes. This horn, however, was special. How could it possibly be replaced? Poor thing, Pearl said. She feels so sad. How can we make it feel better? I know how to lance boils, how to stitch snouts, and mend broken tails. 
but I'm not very good at fixing feelings, Dr. Wu said. Ben looked up at the rain dragon, his gaze resting on the remaining horn. It wasn't white like Meadowmouth's horns. It was silvery and glistened in the sunlight. Its surface was so smooth, it could have been made of... Metal mouth, Ben said, an idea flitting around in his head. Yeah? Remember that chain link that was attached to the trap? Uh-huh. Do you think you can melt that into something else, the way you melted all that stuff and made your nest? Sure. Oh, Ben, Pearl said, her eyes twinkling. She grabbed his arm. That's an amazing idea.